Hello YouTubers, fellow hams and 3D printing enthusiasts. Have you ever wanted to add an SO239 to your 3D printed models and make that cutout for it with the holes for the screws and the main connector? It's really easy. You can draw it in FreeCAD in less than a minute with a trick using construction geometry. I'm going to show you how. Let's go. Let's take a quick look at a technical drawing of an SO239 connector. These dimensions are in millimeters, which is what I'm going to be modeling in anyway. You can model in whatever format you would like. Uh, so our major interest here is the dimension of our big connector in the middle of these holes and the spacing on those holes. Now here is uh, the dimension of our hole, 15.875 millimeters, which we'll round that up to 16 to give a little clearance on the connector. And the holes themselves are 3.5 millimeters diameter, so we'll, we'll um, take those up to four, again, to give a little clearance. Uh, the spacing of the holes, they're 18 millimeters apart in this direction here, and they are 18 millimeters apart in this direction here, a square. And that's important, and you'll see why momentarily. Okay, let's go into FreeCAD. The only things we have to really remember are 16 and 18, all right? Okay, let's go into FreeCAD. So let's say we're making a box here that we're going to put a uh, common mode choke in. And we want to put an SO239 on this end, and we want to put an SO239 on this end. So I'm going to select this face, and I'm going to come up here to the Sketcher tool, create a sketch, and hit it. All right, so here is our box end. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the circle for the connector in the bit in the middle, right? So I'm going to come up here to create circle by center, and I'm going to draw out a circle, and this is 16 millimeters. So there is our main circle, 16 millimeters. Now we got to do the holes. How are we going to space those out uh, and do that all correctly? Well, we're going to use something called construction geometry. If you come up here to this tool, and it's toggle construction geometry. And right now, there's a solid line in the foreground and a dotted line in the background. We're doing regular geometry. If I click that, they trade places and the dotted line is in the foreground. That indicates that we are now creating construction geometry. What is construction geometry? Well, let me make a line right here. And you'll see that that line is dotted and blue. That line is not a physical part of our sketch. It, it doesn't render. If I close the sketch, all we see there is the circle. See it? We don't see the line. All right, I'll go back into the sketch. But we can use that line within our sketch as an anchor point, uh, as a reference. We can measure things to it. We can um, use it to assign a distance from something. Uh, it's, it's a construction scaffold is what it is. So I'm going to delete that line and I'm going to show you what the trick is we're going to use. Okay, we are still in construction geometry mode here. The dotted line is in the foreground. I'm going to come up here to the rectangle tool, drop that down, and I'm going to do a centered rectangle. Now I'm going to come over here to our circle and I'm going to get to where I highlight that center point. And right next to it there, the auto constraint that popped up is that little cross shape, the four lines with the dot in the middle. That's a coincident constraint. That means the center of my rectangle is going to be tied to the center of that circle. So I'll click and I'll drag it out. And now, do you remember how far apart those holes were from each other? They were 18 millimeters. So I'm going to make 18 for the width and 18 for the height and enter. And there is our construction geometry. Now I'm going to come back up here to the Toggle Construction Geometry tool and click. So now the solid line is in the foreground, the dotted line is in the background. We're doing regular geometry again. And I'm going to come over here to the Center Point Circle, or Create Center by cir Circle by Center. And I'm going to come out here and I'm going to do the same thing as I did for the big circle. I'm going to get this to highlight that corner, and you can see the little uh, coincident constraint appear again. And I'm going to click and I'm going to drag out a circle. And these are going to be four millimeters, those holes, right? So I'll put in a four and enter. And then we'll just do the same thing on all of them. You see how this is working? Isn't that cool? That construction geometry square is now our grid or our scaffolding to make sure that these holes are all positioned in the right place. And there they are. 
Just that quick, we have created the holes for our SO239 cutout. Isn't that amazing? You can, and without me talking about it and just doing it, you can do that in less than a minute. And they'll be perfect every time. Also, since they are all tied to this construction geometry, if I click on any one of them and move it, the whole thing moves together. That construction geometry is a scaffold tying everything together. So now I can position it the where I want it to be. And if I want to make it centered on this, here's another trick for you. If you want to center uh, something on a square shape, I'm going to bring in from this uh, box, I'm going to bring in some geometry. We've talked about this in the other tutorials, create external geometry link. This tool here, if I click that, you can see it's highlighting the lines from that box. And up here in the corner is highlighting a point. So I'm going to bring in that point. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to bring in this point. So now I have the points from the corners on the box. I can select one, select the other, select the center of my shape here, and use a symmetry constraint. Watch what happens when I click. Boom. Now the, our cutout is perfectly centered on the face of our box. I'm going to close my sketch. There it is. We'll come up here to the pocket tool to pocket through the wall. I'll click. And there's our connector holes. Just like that. Ready to go. Now I'm going to show you another trick. This is a little time saver. Since we don't have any geometry inside of our box here, there's nothing between this wall and that wall, I'm going to come over here to our pocket parameters and I'm going to select through all and watch this. Bang. Hit OK. And now we have our connector holes on both sides of our box and we are ready to 3D print it. Isn't that cool? So that's how you can quickly and easily create SO239 cutout holes in your 3D projects in FreeCAD. I hope you found that useful. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.